Welcome to Mustard Team Media Video Podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. Last week's podcast, we came back after our long hiatus and talked about configuration management, uh, the new stuff in Drupal 8 for uh, moving files around from uh, your dev box to your production box. Uh, and uh, in doing that podcast episode, I fielded a bunch of questions about, okay, uh, so I cheat and I do things right in production. How do I set up a proper dev environment uh, so I'm not editing stuff in production? Instead, I'm editing it on my dev machine, um, testing it all out with a, a clone of production, and then pushing it up to uh, my production server once I know everything is safe and tested. And that's a great question. And a lot of people don't really have this workflow, especially kind of mid-range or newer uh, Drupal developers. Uh, they tend to sort of skip this because it's, uh, they think it's hard to set up. I'm going to try and make it easy today using Drush. Uh, if you don't know what Drush is, you need to Google that immediately and go uh, watch a bunch of other podcasts first. But I'm going to assume that you know what Drush is and how to use it. I'm also going to assume that you understand Git um, and you understand how to uh, uh, make a clone of your production site uh, onto your local dev box uh, and, uh, and sort of get that up and running. Uh, but the, the thing that I'm really going to focus on today is uh, pulling down uh, your database and all of your files directory uh, at any time that you want from production uh, to your local dev box so you can always have an exact clone of your production server in order to do your new tests and to do things like that. So as we talk about this, there's really three parts to a Drupal site uh, and we have to deal with each part separately. They are uh, the Git part, uh, all of the stuff you commit to your Git repository and push back and forth using Git. Uh, these are all, this is all your source code, this is Drupal, this is your modules, this is your theme, uh, this is all of that stuff, uh, like the configuration management stuff uh, that we, we dipped into a little bit last time. Uh, but what's not in Git is your files directory. Uh, you shouldn't have your files directory in Git because you have all these huge files and they don't need to be version controlled. Um, instead, we need to use rsync to move those uh, files from production down to your local dev box. Uh, and then we have your database. So obviously your database isn't in Git. So then we use, need to use Drush uh, and an SQL dump process uh, to easily pull your production database at any time down to your local dev box. And I emphasize that at any time because what we really want to make sure we can do is if we want to test a new feature, we want to know that we have the latest version of the production uh, database on our local local box. That way, if anything we're doing conflicts with what's currently going on in production, we'll know. Uh, so what I'm going to focus on today is not Git. I'm going to assume you have Git set up uh, you have it running on your remote box. You have a clone of your site using git clone on your local dev box. Uh, and what I'm going to focus on is how to set up, uh, or at least how I set up, uh, Drush to sync your uh, database and to rsync your files down very easily. And we're going to focus on all the configuration uh, files to do that. Okay, enough yapping. Let's look at some stuff. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is uh, before you get going, you're going to want to make sure you have SSH set up properly because we're going to be connecting using Drush uh, via SSH to your server um, and uh, your production server to be able to do all of this Drush stuff back and forth, uh, pulling your database down, etc. So uh, if you haven't set up a, a public key, uh, you probably have uh, if you're using um, if you're using Git already. But just in case, I just wanted to throw this up there, a uh, nice little GitHub help page uh, to set up uh, SSH uh, for when you need to do that. So let's look first at setting up our configurations uh, on our local box uh, to uh, get all of this stuff done. And what we're going to do all of this with is Drush aliases. Drush aliases are really important. So if you have Drush installed on your local box, it probably in your home directory you have a .drush directory. Um, and it may be somewhere else, but usually uh, it's just on your home, um, in your home folder. Within that, uh, you're going to want to create, well, for the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your Drush RC or create one if you don't have one, drushrc.php, and you're going to want to declare a dump directory. And what this is, is this is where Drush is going to dump temporary files during your SQL syncing. Uh, and so you're going to want to define where your dump directory is, and you're going to want to create that directory um, I have mine in my .drush directory just to keep everything together. Uh, and you're going to want to define that stuff. So the process happens uh, when you SQL sync your, your files down is 
your uh, remote server, your production server, will dump your database uh, to a local dump directory on that server. Then it will be rsync down to this dump directory on your local box, and then it will be imported into your local database uh, for the site that you're syncing. Uh, so you got to have a dump directory both here and on production. So you want to declare that first. Then uh, within uh, this same .drush, you want to create an aliases.drushrc.php. Now I'm not going to open mine directly. Mine has about uh, 50 aliases in it, and I just don't want to expose all of those to uh, the general wide world. So I created a sample version. Um, and so yours in here may look something like this. Uh, and you can Google Drush aliases to look at the format, look at all the options, all that kind of stuff. What you have here is kind of a standard one that I use. Um, so I've created a Drush alias. This is just a named configuration for a Drush or for a Drupal site. Uh, and I have called mine example local. Uh, and I've done that so uh, I can say that this is the local dev version on my local machine of this. Uh, and I can say where on my local machine my Drupal site exists, uh, define the URI, which usually is default unless you're running a multi-site. Uh, I have to define where my uh, dump directory is, uh, where my files directory is within that site in case it's someplace else. And then under command specific stuff, uh, we can just name uh, where... Uh, uh, the, basically the name of the file that's going to get dumped when I do an SQL sync from production. Uh, and then you have the sanitize flag. This is important. You should read about this. Uh, this basically sanitizes your database when it pulls to, um, to your dev box, doing things like uh, making generic email addresses and generic uh, passwords for everyone. So you can log in as any user on your dev box. And you also won't accidentally send email to everybody um, if you do something that would send email uh, because all the email addresses are sanitized. Uh, anyway, so that's that's all in our local uh, .drush. So mine's in home uh, on my local box .drush directory in the aliases file. And uh, so this is site-wide stuff. So this is no matter what site you're in, Drush can read this directory, read these aliases, and you're good to go. Then you want to also set up the same kind of thing uh, in your uh, in your actual clone, uh, your Git clone of your local dev site. So this is our local dev site on our local machine. And we're going to go into sites default, and then within there, you probably don't yet have an aliases file, but you want to create an aliases.drushrc.php file in there, uh, and that's going to look something like this. And this is uh, this. So because this is within your site, this travels around with Git. This is committed. Um, into your Git uh, repo. And uh, in here, you want to define the alias for your production machine. Uh, and what this really is doing is telling Drush how to connect to your production machine. So it's a lot of SSH stuff. So at first, you're going to define the root. You're going to say where on the production machine is the actual Drupal site. Uh, you're going to say what is the SSH host I'm going to connect to. Uh, what's my SSH user? You'll notice there's no password in here. Think of how bad that would be to put your password um, right into uh, your aliases. Uh, and commit them to Git and have that password flying all over the place. Really bad news uh, to do that. So we're going to look at how to uh, get around that in just a second. Um, you have your URI. Then this is all remote stuff on your production machine. You have where does Drush live on your production machine? Um, where's the dump directory on your production machine? Where's the files directory of the site on your production machine? And then what's the source file going to be called uh, when you dump it, uh, the SQL file, uh, to the, the production machine. So this lives within your um, your site's default directory in the aliases.drushrc file. And uh, and so now we have an alias for local. We have an alias for remote, right? So that's all good. Uh, the one thing you're going to want to make sure you have set up is because we don't have that password, uh, I'm going to assume you've got uh, an SSH key set up on your production server. Um, and so you have a .ssh uh, directory on your production server, and in there uh, you have um, uh, you have an authorized keys, right? So authorized keys is uh, the key that uh, is on your local box, your your local SSH public key. Uh, you'll have to read about that if you don't know how all that stuff works. Um, and so you want to create an authorized keys uh, file, and in that key you're going to put your local public key. Uh, so I'm going to open one that's fake, uh, but this would normally be this authorized key file. Uh, and so I'm going to copy my local public SSH public key from my local machine uh, and paste it into my production uh, machine in this authorized keys file. And what that does is that serves 
to not need a password then. So when we go back to our Drush alias, where there's no password defined uh, to log into our production server, that's because it's going to use this public key to pair that instead. Um, again, go, do a little Googling if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Uh, but this avoids need uh, for a password. Uh, okay, so we have it all set up. So Drush now knows where my local site is. It knows where my production site is. Now all we have to do is use some internal commands to say, all right, go to my uh, production server and SQL sync my database to my local site. Or go to my production server and rsync the files directory to my local files directory. Two commands that we got to run. Uh, now, I put a little safety thing in place when I run these. Uh, on my local machine, uh, in my uh, home directory, I have a bash profile, right? And so this is a lot of configuration stuff that you can do in here. I'm going to open a fake one. Um, but one of the things that you can put in here are aliases for commands that you're going to run uh, on your uh, on your command line. And so you can just randomly name full commands an alias uh, to shorten it all up. Now, the reason I do this, and this is very important, is if you type in the Drush command, for example, to sync your SQL database from production down to dev, you type it in backwards, what you're actually telling Drush to do, and it won't stop you, is copying your local dev version of the database and overwrite production. Bad news, right? You really don't want that to happen. So I never run the Drush commands directly. Uh, to sync uh, SQL or rsync because I never want to get those backwards. I set them up one time in uh, an alias in my bash profile and that way I only run the alias. I know it's always going to be correct and I never have to worry about that. So you would set up two aliases in your bash profile that might look something like this. I called one alias example-rsync and that then runs this command. And this is the command that uses our aliases to rsync our production files directory down to our local files directory. Uh, the command is drush rsync, and then here's my uh, production, uh, and then it's defining the files within the production alias down to my local and the files directory in my local. So that is a shortcut to tell drush to go ahead and sync the production files directory down to local files directory. So if I want to run this locally, all I would do is log in SSH locally and just type example rsync. I can't do it because it's not set up for real, but I would hit go and it would say, are you sure you want to sync rsync files from this remote SSH directory down to this local uh, Drush in, or Drupal install? And I'd say, yep, and it would go boom, and it would pull all my files down, uh, and then I would have a mirrored files directory. Similarly, uh, we can, uh, sorry, I don't know, where this is, there we go. Um, uh, we can uh, do the same thing with your SQL, uh, SQL database. You can set up uh, a alias, which I do, example-sql. So this could be your site name-sql, whatever you want to call it. And it's Drush SQL sync, a built-in SQL sync function for Drush, which is beautiful. You simply tell it uh, where you're going from, production, where you're going to, local. I always redo the sanitize flag. I think some of my aliases might be wrong. Um, you don't have to do that. You can figure out how to make your alias uh, proper. <laughs> but I always throw that in there just in case because I want to make sure it's sanitized. Um, and uh, so this flag uh, will uh, fire with all of this and say, pull my database down from production to my local. And once it's on my local, sanitize it. Right. So then to sync my local database, I can just do example dash SQL, enter. It'll say, are you sure you want to wipe out your local database and replace it with production? You say yes. It'll do all that, it'll sanitize it. So then all I have to do to reset, let's say I'm, I'm gonna do a new feature on a site. All I gotta do is git pull, right? To make sure I have the latest stuff from git uh, in, my, in my local uh, site. And then I do example-sql and I say yes, and it pulls all my database in. Example-rsync, yes, pulls in all my files directory. I can clear my caches. I now have a local sanitized copy of exactly production on my local box. Man, that oh, I, that, that seemed confusing to me. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't confusing to you. Visit over at uh, mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast. I think this is episode 57. Um, so uh, mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast slash episode 57. 
Uh, and there you can leave comments. You can tell me, man, that was confusing. I didn't understand anything. Or you can say, hey, this was great. Or, hey, you shouldn't do this because that was dumb or whatever you want. Uh, or follow us on Facebook or Twitter and uh, we can interact there as well. Woo, that's it for now. Hopefully this helps. This is this is stuff you got to know. This is stuff you got to be doing uh, to work on Drupal. Uh, and hopefully I made it at least a little bit simpler for you. We'll see you next time on the Mustard Seed Media video podcast.